Hi, I'm Dr. Dai. Welcome to our first video for chapter one. Uh, we are going to be looking at an overview of photosynthesis. All life forms from the simplest to the most complex are composed of cells and these cells operate using chemical energy, uh, primarily through the potential energy stored in the carbon bonds of carbohydrate molecules. Um, how are those molecules produced? primarily by photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, specific organisms are able to transform solar energy, so sunlight, into chemical energy, uh, and they can construct a carbohydrate molecule in the process. Uh, when organisms break down food, they're releasing that potential energy that's stored in those chemical bonds. Um, and that's then utilized by the cell to perform various tasks including cellular respiration. This energy coming from photosynthesis flows continuously through Earth's ecosystems, uh, transferring from one organism to another as one thing eats something else or something dies and is then digested and consumed by fungi and bacteria. Um, so whether directly or indirectly, photosynthesis supplies the majority of the energy required by all living organisms on the planet. Um, furthermore, photosynthesis plays a vital role in replenishing the atmosphere with oxygen. So our ability to eat and break that food down, and then we release CO2, and then that CO2 is used by plants to then create more sugar and they release oxygen, and on and on it goes. Some organisms perform photosynthesis while others do not. Um, autotroph is the term we use to refer to organisms that can create their own food. Uh, and this derives from Greek roots, meaning self-feeder, auto, self, troph, feed. Uh, while plants are the most recognizable autotrophs, um, there are others, like certain types of bacteria, a huge group of algae that are single-celled eukaryotes that can also um, carry out photosynthesis. Uh, and these contribute significantly to the global food chain, as well as to uh, global oxygen levels. Uh, plants are a specific type of autotroph called a photoautotroph. Um, they utilize sunlight and carbon dioxide to produce carbohydrates uh, in the form of chemical energy, right? Um, all photosynthetic organisms are going to depend on sunlight. Now, on the other hand, we have heterotrophs. They are incapable of photosynthesis, like you and me. We can't just walk outside and lay in the sun and, ooh, I'm eating, right? You have to take food in. You, you can't produce your own nutrition. Um, so for uh, heterotrophs, it also derives from the Greek. Hetero means other, and troph again is feeder, feeder, so other feeder. You have to eat other things. Um, so even when an organism eats another organism, Ultimately, it's tracing its origins back to some autotroph. So, you know, maybe you had a hamburger, but that cow ate grass, right? So ultimately, those carbohydrates that you're consuming, the energy that went into, you know, powering that animal you ate, goes back to photosynthesis and an autotroph at some level. Um, so a nice example is like deer and wolves are both heterotrophs. Um, deer obtain energy by consuming plants where wolves eat the deer um, and then the wolf doesn't eat all of the deer so what it doesn't eat um, decomposes back into the soil which nourishes it and fertilizes it and allows new grass to grow uh, so it you know it just keeps going around and around um, all right so there are some particular structures that go with photosynthesis, and it has a nice straightforward uh, calculation, a little formula that we're gonna look at. Um, so photosynthesis hinges on the essential starting components of sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. You gotta have those three things to carry out photosynthesis. Uh, upon completion, this process is gonna yield you oxygen, uh, and most notably, and it's the thing that it's really making, is um, carbohydrate molecules. So things like glucose or sometimes cellulose, depends on the, depends on the organism. Um, these sugars, as we know from the previous chapter, are incredibly important for powering 
the mitochondria, being able to do uh, aerobic respiration or even fermentation. You've got to have a sugar source to run those processes. So while this equation is fairly simple, uh, the actual process entails a whole bunch of really intricate steps. Um, a lot like the, you know, we had the, in the citric acid cycle, the wheel that went around. It's gonna have a lot of steps just like that did. And some of them even uh, have similarities. And we'll do a little compare and contrasting uh, later, later in this chapter. Um, so before we get into the specifics of it, uh, let's just look at the relevant structures so that you get familiar. So in plants, uh, photosynthesis predominantly unfolds in the leaves, where the green pigment is. Um, the leaves are going to be comprised of multiple layers of cells with distinct upper and lower sides. Um, and contrary to common belief, photosynthesis doesn't transpire on the leaf surface layers, but rather within a special part of the mesophyll. Um, and the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen also takes place in a specialized location. These special little openings called stroma. And, and you really can't get a picture of how beautiful these structures are from a cartoon. I would really like to encourage you to Google um, scanning electron micrograph of stroma. These things are so pretty. Um, photosynthesis takes place within an organelle known as the chloroplast. In plants, cells containing chloroplasts are located in the mesophyll. Uh, chloroplasts have that same dual membrane structure that we've seen before on, say, like mitochondria. Uh, so it has an inner and an outer membrane structure. Uh, within the chloroplast, uh, there's a third membrane that forms these really neat little disc-like stacks called thylakoids. Um, these thylakoid membranes incorporate chlorophyll molecules, which are the pigment that initiates the entire photosynthesis process. Um, and chlorophyll is responsible for that green hue. Um, chlorophyll absorbs light and reflects some of it back out. It only absorbs certain wavelengths. It reflects back off the green wavelength, which is why the plant appears green. Um, the thylakoid membrane encompasses an internal compartment called the thylakoid space. Um, and there are other pigments besides chlorophyll, but it's, it's kind of the primary pigment we're gonna think of. But there are some that are more in the orange zone. Um, and depending on the plant, some even differ from there. Uh, and those tend to function, um, have roles like in different times of the season and a whole range of other things that we won't get into just yet. Photosynthesis is a two-stage process uh, that includes a light-dependent reaction and the Calvin cycle. Um, during the light-dependent reaction, which is going to occur at the thylakoid membrane, chlorophyll will absorb sunlight uh, and that energy will then be converted into chemical energy using water. Um, this is also going to release an oxygen through water hydrolysis as part of this process. We're going to break a water, we're going to release some oxygen. Um, in the stroma within the Calvin cycle, the chemical energy generated by the light dependent cycle, um, it's going to facilitate the actual carbon fixation, so the generation of the actual sugar molecule. Um, and it's going to use carbon dioxide to synthesize that sugar molecule because we need, we need to bring carbon in to do that. Um, carrier molecules are going to shuttle energy back and forth between these two reactions. So the carriers leave the light dependent reaction uh, full of energy and they transfer that energy into the Calvin cycle to power it. Uh, once they release that energy into the Calvin cycle, they're now empty and can return to the light dependent reaction to acquire more energy and they go back and forth and back and forth. All right. Thank you for joining me for this uh, brief overview of photosynthesis. Uh, we'll come back and look specifically at the light-dependent reaction in the next video.